the Diablo 3 Gameplay and Auction House panel. Your panelists are Jay Wilson, Jason Bender, Wyatt Cheng, Andrew Chambers, and Chris Haga. I love you too, faceless member. I actually can see your face. Oh, it's Pinto. Hi, Pinto. What's up, BlizzCon? How you doing? You guys ready to talk about some Diablo? You're good. So I have to tell you, the endless forces of hell, they got some plans for you guys. But I have to say, looking around the room, I think you can take them. I think so. So uh, what we're going to talk to you today is the endless amounts of items, uh, class tuning, abilities, and a whole bunch of stuff um, about how you can take on those forces of hell. Um, so our panelists here today are myself, Jay, I work on Diablo, uh, Jason Bender, Senior Game Designer, Andrew Chambers, Senior Game Designer, Wyatt Ching, Senior Technical Game Designer, and Chris Haga, Technical artist. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and let Bender get started. Thank you, Jay. Hey, everybody. So I'm going to talk about achievements today a little bit. Um, and you can get achievements in a number of ways. Uh, one of those ways is coming to BlizzCon. So congratulations, you got your virtual achievement. So, so you know, not all achievements involve you going to LAX and all that jazz. Some of them are a little easier to get. Normally you might be playing through and you kill the Skeleton King, you can get an achievement for that. It allows you to track your progress as you're going through the game, feel good about what you've done, you know, review it. Uh, some of it's a little more crazy, extreme behavior. We consider it extreme to get a level 60 hardcore character because it's not easy. So, uh, you know, if you do things that are a little tougher in the game, you're going to get achievements for that. And then of course, absurd shenanigans because we all love shenanigans. Uh, our German players know about this. They play D2 without putting any armor on. That's pretty absurd. Uh, in this case, uh, it might be for beating every boss uh, by punching it in the face without holding a weapon. So that would be something that might get you an achievement. But, you know, what's the point beyond that? They're fun to collect. They let you track your accomplishments. But when you get achievements, they also unlock components for your banner. So your banner is sort of a visual representation of what you've done in the game, of all your accomplishments. The more you achieve, the more components for your banner you unlock. For example, in PvP, you might, get open, you know, might open some crests. Um, just playing through the game normally and getting achievements by quantity will extend this pennant so it gets more stuff on it as you play. Uh, other achievements can change the cloth, the sigil, the accents. And then, of course, if you play a lot of hardcore, the base of your banner will get bigger. And after a while, it can all add up to something pretty cool. So now, these banners are not just pretty, although they are pretty. Uh, they also allow you, in co-op, to teleport directly to your friends. So if they're out running around, you don't know where they are, you went back to town to craft something or buy from a vendor, you can just click on their banner and then teleport directly to them. So that's pretty useful. Plus, that's a good way of ensuring that people see your cool banner. Uh, that's not it, though. There's some other elements we're adding to make gameplay a little more convenient for you. Uh, for example, the Stone of Recall. So the Stone of Recall is an endless use item. You can use it as many times as you want to get yourself back to town from the wilderness. So here we are, like, you know, casting it. it takes about 10 seconds. Can be interrupted by monsters. Let's hope that guy up there on the left doesn't interrupt us. So you get back to town, and it leaves this blue portal thing behind. Um, and that allows you to go back to where you came from. Only you can use it. Your friends can't use it, but they can get to you with your banner, so that's no big deal. Uh, we're not sure what to call this thing, maybe like village door or something. If you can think of something, let us know. <laughs> also, we have the Cauldron of Jordan. So the Cauldron of Jordan allows you to sell stuff right out of your inventory. So if you want to clear up your inventory, you want some gold, you can sell as many things as you want right out of your bag. Similarly, the cube of the Nephilim allows you to pick items in your bag and convert them to crafting components. So you can, you know, you got some stuff in your bag, 
you like it, maybe you replaced your gear, you don't want to go back to town just yet, you can use the cube of the Nephilim to convert them into crafting materials and craft all kinds of cool stuff. Thanks, Jason. Holy moly, there's a lot of you guys out there. How you doing? All right, I'm going to talk about crafting for a bit, but crafting is all about making items or making your existing items even more awesome. So I wanted to take a step back and look at the way that items were handled in Diablo 2 and what their item life cycle was. You kind of got items from two different sources in Diablo 2. You could buy it from a vendor, or you could do what I've done here, kill Andaril and get awesome Trident. Once I've picked up that item, I'm probably going to, say, wear it for a while, but then it's going to get upgraded, and I can trade it to my friend uh, for some gold, maybe, if I'm lucky, or I can sell it to Chassis here for some gold. Um, what do I do with that gold? Well, you could gamble it with Geed. Um, Geed allowed you to buy these unidentified items for like crazy amounts of gold or crazy little amounts of gold, and then you identified them and found out what it was. The system is actually really cool because it gave you access to some super powerful items, but a lot of people had a really negative experience when they first tried it out, so they never really went back and kept on doing it again and again and again. So you just end up hoarding all of your gold. And that's not really a life cycle, that's just, you know, a pub with no beer. Um, and that makes Andrew really, really sad. <clears throat> so what are some of the things that we're doing in Diablo 3 to make this item life cycle better? First off, I want to talk about the Mystic. The Mystic is where you go if you want to enhance your items. She can take any item that you have, like your chest piece or your bracers, and she can add an enhancement to it. Um, the enhancements are a wide array of things, um, like gold find or magic find, um, but also increased core stats. There's also a whole bunch of things that you can do for, like, that's class related. So, for example, here it increases hatred gen regeneration by 0.83 per second um, on a one handed weapon. The interesting thing about enhancements in Diablo 3 as opposed to WoW is they're actually random. So that 0.83 per second, that actually has a chance, like a, the bottom line for that is 0.66 per second. So you can see up here I've enhanced my keen axe of storms with hatred regen and I've gotten the bottom. It's like 0.66 per second. I can reapply that enhancement and have a chance of actually making it better and making it get to the top end of that range. The awesome thing about that is as you're leveling up, you know, you apply the enhancement and that's good enough um, and it's maybe like middle range. But at the end game, by applying these enhancements, you can get like really super powerful enhancements on your items that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to get by investing time and resources into that. And of course, she really facilitates aberrant builds. What the what is that? That is a demon hunter running around with a one-handed axe and a shield. Who the hell thought of that? We did. Um, because it's awesome, you know? Like, you don't always have to want to run around and play with ranged weapons. Maybe you just want to, like, spam fan of knives and chakram and vault everywhere and that sort of stuff. And the mystic can allow you to do that. Ordinarily, you wouldn't be able to get hatred regen on a one-handed axe. But, hey, she lets you do it because she's kind of cool. Um, and she levels up. She has ten levels. Awesome artwork. We have amazing eyes, by the way. Have you noticed? Yeah. Um, she levels up. She has 10 levels. Every time she levels up, she gets more powerful enhancements. And she uses pages of training to level up, which you can get from killing monsters randomly in the world. The next guy I want to talk about is the jeweler. This guy's covered a Shen. He's a little bit shady, but if you have anything gem-related, he's the guy to go to. So what can he do? He can combine your gems. Um, in the game, you have like 14 different ranks of gems. Uh, gems can be uh, put in sockets uh, of your items and they imbue extra properties. So like, you know, you want more experience, you can put a, a, a ruby in your helm socket and that gives you plus X percent experience for every kill that you make. Um, the more powerful ones, of course, like are only found and able to be combined. So you're going to have to level him up to get access to those. Um, 
You can also add sockets to items. Um, this is great. Like, say I'm playing a barb and I'm like really loving precision and frenzy and kicking butt that way. Um, and I get this item and it's got tons of precision, or sorry, tons of like fury uh, regeneration on it, but I need precision. So I add a socket to it and then I can put uh, the, the gem in there which has the plus precision attribute. He also removes gems from items. Um, this is actually, it's actually pretty cool. Um, let me give you an example here. Say you're like leveling up, you hit level 60, you've been having that plus experience gem in your helm the entire time, but you're level 60 now. You don't need experience. So you go to this guy, you have him take the gem out, you put the plus 20% life in there because in Inferno you're going to need it. Um, and then you can send that uh, plus experience gem to your, to your ult and then help uh, level him up faster. Speaking of leveling up, the jeweler also levels up. As he levels up, he gets the ability to combine more powerful gems, higher ranks. Um, he also uses pages of training to level up. So when you're like improving your like artisans, you're gonna have to kind of pick and choose which ones you want to focus on. Fortunately, they're account based. So you know you level up your barb to level 60, and you focus on the the blacksmith the entire time. When the demon hunter, you level in, you jump in, and um, right there and then the bar the Blacksmith is already like level 10 and you're mystic, you know, you can level her up separately. Talking about the blacksmith, um, we've spoken a lot about him already. He can forge items and craft, you know, things for you. Um, what we haven't spoken about is he can actually uh, craft legendary and unique set items for you. So these are things that you find in, say, normal difficulty. So here he's like uh, making a, uh, the sanity's edge. It's a legendary two-handed mighty weapon. Um, this has actually come from a plan that you found when you were killing a monster. You took that plan to your blacksmith, you taught it to him, and now you can make that again and again and again. Um, he can also make the unique set items. Now, this is a normal difficulty unique set. You're gonna, you know, find this in the world when you're playing normal. The tricky thing about Diablo is that these items can drop from anything. It's not like you can pick one boss and just go and farm that for your set. So we figured, hey, let's, you know, make it a little bit easier for you guys. And once you get this plan, you can then craft every item in this set to get the set bonus. So here I've crafted Bond's pauldrons, the shoulder pieces, and his seething rage, the one-handed sword. I've crafted those so I can wear them and get the set bonus. Makes it way easier. I mean, in Inferno, you're still going to be like farming unique sets and that sort of stuff. But this is just a, a really great way of ensuring that as you're progressing through the game, you can still get the cool factor out of these things. So how does the Diablo 3 item lifecycle look with all those added features? Well, when an item's born, it can come from a vendor or from a loot drop. Um, it can also come from crafting or, of course, from the auction house. So what do I do with it? I can wear it. I'm probably definitely going to wear it if I buy it off the auction house. Um, when I'm done with it, I can sell it. Uh, that gives me gold for repairs or for crafting or uh, forging more gear. Um, I can salvage it and I can actually sell those salvage components on the auction house. I can use them to enhance my existing items. Um, I can put it on the auction house directly, and make gold, make money, who doesn't like that. Um, or I can trade it. I can help twink out my characters, or I can, you know, give it to my friend and be nice. It's not my style, but, you know, I twink. Um, so what's an example of that? So say I'm playing through the game, and I get a loot draw. I don't really need it, it's not an upgrade, so I decide to salvage it. it salvages into some, some components that I put for sale up on the auction house. Someone buys that, win, rock and roll, I made some gold. I keep on playing for a while, and then I, next, next week I go and like look on the auction house and see a wicked one-handed axe that's just like perfect for me. I decide to buy that from the auction house. I didn't know that that was actually crafted from the same salvage components that I sold on the auction house a week earlier. That's a life cycle, and that makes Andrew happy. And of course we have some awesome art item artwork that we just wanted to show off. It didn't fit in anywhere else, but these are all the awesome items that you're going to be doing and playing with.